uh, no uh, ill effects. Uh, and uh, what's going to happen is that uh, they have certificates of uh, appreciation. The director of safety and environmental uh, from uh, Palo Alto DA is planning to come down with the operations chief and to make a presentation to all the students that participate. We had 25 total people that participated. We had two service dogs. And, um, and uh, that's the conclusion of Martin and Mai's collaboration. Questions from the audience? Yes, we can keep contaminated. <laughs> he didn't cover it, but the, uh, the military does a, uh, a, a something even more intense than this. Uh, we've all heard of uh, uh, the Walking Dead, uh, the, the zombie apocalypse, and we all make a joke about that. The military and law enforcement does have to prepare for the apocalypse. Not as we've seen it on TV, but if you have a biological uh, infestation, uh, whether it's natural or terrorist or, uh, uh, or of origin, they have to isolate a group of people. And part of that means that that group of people will be, would be considered the walking dead. I've seen the exercise uh, 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 put up. They surround it. Anybody contained within that area cannot leave. They are under death. Threat. The military has to kill anybody who tries to leave. Kind of a hard thing for military, civilian. Doesn't matter if they're a child, doesn't matter if they're an adult. They're contaminated with something that will contaminate the rest of the country or the rest of the community. And it's not treatable. So they are literally the walking dead. And that's the reason they do these exercises and they call it the zombie apocalypse, and the military will surround them. Not related to anything I'm going to do. He did this great thing, and I didn't want to take any credit for it, because he did all that work. Not me. So, so. Oops. Oops. Thank you. Hopefully it's <laughs> well enough. These are my, uh, uh, we talk about the, PDL. I don't do anything but PDL. I don't, know, I don't know how to teach any other way. Beginning of the second semester, I have a series of homicides. They've already got all the tools of how to conduct a, a homicide investigation or an investigation. They know how to collect the evidence. They know how to document the evidence. They know how to, uh, uh, you know, compile it safely. What I do here is introduce the concept of a serial killer. And that means that we're going to have five or six homicides with the same profile. So they're going to psychologically profile not only the killer, but the victims. And you'll notice the area. They start the way the victims dress. You know, we talk about uh, to, the, to these girls, young ladies, I should say, about how you dress and how that can show you as professional or not so professional. I mean, I talk to my granddaughter about this all the time. Uh, you know, she rolls in with a tank top and, skit, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, a sweetheart, you know, don't do that. Actually, Grandma, Nana does it more than I do. I, I, I like it. <laughs> but in this, we also have the rope that's used, the knots that are used. So they have to be able to identify all the different things that connect the dots and the areas. And then I start giving them, I, I treat it like a real case. They don't get it all at once. They get one case, then they get another case. And they're not necessarily not finding these cases at the, at, at, in the order in which they took place, the decomposition of the bodies. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, my uh, mannequins, I can't decompose my mannequins, but I can tell them that it, the, the body has been decomposing for X amount of time. They have to take notes, like a real copper or a real investigator. They have to keep track of all of that. And then they compile it. They do their, we call it a murder board. They get to name, name it. They all give, uh, give the, they all have different titles for the, the serial killers, the not killer, the... Uh, the, the naughty pine killer. Uh, they, they, it's their, they have fun. They try to make light of it. 
as best as they can. And they do a pretty good job making light of it. Now, you, you notice that all of the girls are tied up substantially the same way. You know, the, 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 and we have a serial killer who's doing this, and he's progressing. He's not starting out in w doing it in one way. He starts one way. If you've done any investigations at all, or you haven't, but I have, uh, it, they start out, and they may not have a pattern down. They may not have it down. They, they're, the first time is it, pretty sloppy. But then they start putting, the, the, put, putting together what's called a murder kit. They actually start packing for their, their homicides. They have their, the tools of their trade, so to speak, packed, uh, packed away. And they start using the same thing over and over and over. And they get more systematic about it. And they have to identify that in their investigation. So uh, as, as sick as this sounds, they really enjoy this. But you know, the more upsetting a, a topic is, it seems to be the more engaging it is for them. So I make it as upsetting as possible. But we have a lot of opportunity for discussion uh, you know, about how behavior, your behavior. We talk about uh, 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 safety. You know, I, you know, for some of these girls, my victims are college girls, uh, mistaken for prostitutes. So the, you know, how you dress sometimes can say, speak to a, 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 somebody who's looking for a target. But walking in numbers, walking in, in daylight, knowing your surroundings, having your head on a swivel all the time. So we do a, we do a safety thing as well as that. They have to identify. Are they power oriented, mission oriented, uh, profit oriented, different types of, uh, of, of uh, profiles for the different for the different killers. They have to uh, identify if it's uh, uh, if it's uh, uh, organized or disorganized. There were serial killers that were disorganized. That means they're usually psychotic and they usually get caught. Not always. Uh, they don't always get caught right away. It just sort of depends. Uh, some of these uh, some of the ones in in uh, uh, in uh, Canada killed over 50 women. In, in, and they were completely disorganized. They just were here, there, all over the place. They just never got caught for whatever reason. Maybe it's because they're in remote regions and there's not much investigation going on. They're not connecting the dots. We talk about serial killers. Why? One of the things that uh, uh, we talk about with serial killers is that the U.S. reportedly has more serial killers than any other country in the world. My first question to them is, why do you think that is? We why investigate better. Probably. We keep track. We, 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 we keep you go down to South America, there's nobody keeping track of who's killing who. You go into Africa, there's nobody keeping track of who's killing who. We have somebody, the FBI, keeping track of what's going on so that we can start connecting the dots. Because guess what? Serial killers don't always are not always operational in one state or one area. In this, my case, it's all one area. But sometimes it can be nationwide. Uh, Mullins was local. Uh, Kemper was local. Uh, all, all the ones that I was familiar with were, were, were within a region. But then you have uh, Ted Bundy. He he was in different states all over the place. Then you had the the highway not 80, I don't remember which highway, where the serial killer was a truck driver. And he was leaving his victims along a, 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 an interstate. And if you don't have an FBI, you don't catch him. They did, because you have an FBI connecting the dots. That's my serial killer. We're just completing the DNA. It's not... We're, we did that. We we've done the. Uh, we've just got through completing uh, uh, the uh, electrophoresis. God love them. Well, I, 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 if I get one successful electrophoresis a year, I'm just a really happy camper. 
it's such a hard thing to complete the electrophoresis to get all those steps. There, there are uh, 30 steps that they have to take from the way they make the gel to the way they handle the gel to the way they put the combs in to the way they, uh, it's worse than breaks. <laughs> you know, it, you know uh, and, and, and DNA anymore in this day and age, people don't put it in the little slots. It's a machine that does it. And the machine never does, never makes a mistake, like a human being with an unsteady hand. So God bless them. Their little hands with the micro pipettes are sitting there like this, trying to get it in the little holes. Uh, you know, it's all right. If the, if if for no other reason we go through the exercise so that they know how difficult it is or was in the early stages, we also watch a movie about the origins or the discovery of the the uh, the uh, DNA model and in 1959, and the technology that it did not exist in 1959, and, uh, and, and how difficult it was. And then they get to make the same model. And they, they spend a week making these models and pulling it up. And, they're, and they do it in teams of four. They argue. It's fun to listen to them arguing with each other and, and, and working it out. And I, you know, they go, I give them the instructions, and I just get out of the way. I don't do anything. It's the easiest teaching you can possibly do is just get out of the way and, and watch. And when they ask a question, I go, it's in, this, it's in there somewhere. Find it. I don't know. I've, I've gotten really good at saying, I don't know. I don't have the answer. you got to find the answer. It's fun. Because they get jacked up when I say, I don't know. Now, after years. I know what the answer is, but I'm not going to tell them. I like to play dumb. It's easy. I'm just an old copper. I don't know anything about this. you got to figure this out. You guys are smarter than I am. You're going to be scientists. I'm just an old copper. So they, they, they discovered the, 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 uh, how to construct it. They understand the, the, the bases and the different things that go, go together to making up a DNA model. <coughs> And they have fun with it. They, you can't beat learning when you're having fun. Because they're, they're, it's a hands-on learning, too. It's not on a computer. I know. We all want to be on computers. We want to have them doing digital this and digital that. Well, we do some of that, too. But when you actually handle the physical <coughs> mechanism that makes up the DNA model, their learning here connects through their fingers in a, in a way that can't be done any other way. So that's why I've doubled the number of, of kits that I had. I started out with only two kits. I now have nine kits. Because that means I can put them out there and have more, more kids working on individual models. And they do the same thing. They, I, don't, I don't tell them what to draw on there. I don't tell them how to do it. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I got the old... <laughs> Just like in class, I could talk for hours without even using it. <laughs> All right, so Corey, somebody's like here. Well, hopefully, it is. Hopefully, it is that one.